Hey guys, it's Max. Over the last year, I've gotten a surprising amount of requests to compare the MacBook Pro versus the iMac. Whenever I got that question, I always answered it really quickly, saying that if you need something that's portable, get the MacBook Pro, or if you don't mind being locked down and want more power, get the iMac. As simple as that is to answer, I've never actually compared the two machines and shown how much of a difference there actually is. So today, we're gonna answer that question. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community that provides the most convenient and organized way to learn the skills you need to further your business or hobby. There are thousands of courses on a variety of topics ranging from filmmaking and editing to business marketing. I'm currently taking a few courses on SEO strategies and optimization, project management, and tips on maximizing productivity. It's also available for Android and iPhone with the ability to download any courses for offline viewing. So the next time you're sitting around playing Candy Crush, open up Skillshare and learn how to plan, capture, and edit your own cinematic short film. And at only $10 a month, you really can't get much more bang for the buck. For a limited time, get a free two-month trial by clicking the link in the video description or by using the coupon code MAXYURIEV at checkout. Behind me, I have two of Apple's latest computers. One is a 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro, the other is a 17 iMac. They both just got released, so this is the perfect time to compare them. Both of these machines come in at right around $3,000. The iMac comes in slightly cheaper because I bought the 8GB RAM model and I installed extra RAM myself, which will save me a good chunk of change and allow me to upgrade to 64GB in the future. Before I get into the benchmarks, I have to mention that the editing experience is much nicer on the 5K iMac. Both the displays are very nice, they're contrasty, color accurate, bright and sharp, but of course having 27 inches of screen real estate makes it much easier to edit. I ended up buying the 27-inch 5K LG Ultrafine display, which actually matches the IMAX display exactly, but that adds on an extra cost, which makes the MacBook Pro much more expensive if you want to do a desktop type setup with it. Getting into performance, we're going to start off with Cinebench R15, which is a 3D modeling benchmark. For the CPU test, the iMac was 17% faster, and for a GPU, we had a 45% faster score. I was really surprised by how well the MacBook Pro's KB Lake processor kept up. This score is almost on par with the previous generation 5K iMac. Looking at Geekbench 4, we have a 17% faster single core score and a 20% faster multi-core score. With the OpenCL graphics test here, we see a massive 175% faster speed with the iMac. Once again, I'm impressed with the processor in this MacBook Pro, but the graphics card just can't compete with the desktop grade GPU that's in the iMac. Running Unigen Heaven, a gaming benchmark, we have a 125% higher score with the iMac. If you saw my 2015 versus 2017 5K iMac comparison, you'll know that this is the first iMac that can actually do a respectable job at gaming. You could play Battlefield 1 at 2560 by 1440p on ultra settings and consistently hit over 60 FPS. If you want to play games on the Mac Pro, you're going to have to go down to 1080p and go down to medium or low graphics to get usable frame rates, and even then you're not going to be hitting 60 FPS, so if you're a gamer, consider that as well. Now let's take a look at some projects using my standard set of tests. I'm going to lay these graphs out so you guys can compare both the iMac to the MacBook Pro and the different video editing programs all at the same time to see how much of a difference there is between the two machines and the video editing programs. Starting off stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip, in Final Cut the iMac was more than twice as fast. In Premiere Pro we saw a 40% difference and in Resolve a 45% difference. Now one thing I have to point out is how much faster Final Cut is at stabilizing 4K video. There's a massive difference and it doesn't matter if you're using the MacBook Pro or the iMac, it's just incredible compared to Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, which takes three to four and a half minutes compared to eight seconds with the iMac or 18 seconds with the MacBook Pro. The next test is a five minute 1080p clip with two LUTs and film grain applied. In Final Cut, the iMac is 85% faster, in Premiere Pro, 110% faster, and in Resolve, 60% faster. Running the same test, but in 4K, the iMac is 90% faster in Final Cut, 90% faster in Premiere Pro, and 55% faster in DaVinci Resolve. The last project that I test is incredibly difficult. It's only 20 seconds long, but it consists of four 4K clips downsampled into a 4K timeline, each with two LUTs and film grain applied, and two of those clips reversed. In Final Cut, the iMac is 125% faster, Premiere Pro 25% faster, and in DaVinci Resolve 125% faster as well. 
Video rendering and encoding tests do help us paint a pretty good picture about performance, but it doesn't cover everything like importing footage or jumping around the timeline, playing back files without having to render, so I wanted to test timeline smoothness. I used the same five minute 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied and tested how well these computers can play back these timelines without rendering. In Final Cut, the MacBook Pro can almost play back this timeline without rendering. I do have it set to better quality, which gives us a full 4K resolution preview. Uh, you can always set it to better performance and have no problem playing back, even stacking more LUTs than that. The iMac can't perform better and it can actually handle three LUTs applied without rendering, without dropping any frames. In Premiere Pro, there's a bigger gap between the two machines. The MacBook Pro can't really handle even one LUT in film grain without dropping at least a few frames. That is in the full resolution, but most people actually use one half or one quarter instead because the monitor is small and you don't have to you know, fit a full 4K into this tiny little space. So the quality is still fine if you go to one half, it can play back two LUTs, but at full resolution, it even struggles with one. Whereas the iMac can almost do two LUTs in film grain applied with the full resolution, it drops a few few frames, but it's still usable. With the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, the MacBook Pro can almost handle two LUTs in film grain. It does one no problem with two. Once again, we drop a few frames, but it's still usable. The iMac on the other hand rips through LUTs like it's nobody's business. It can actually handle six LUTs in film grain and still not drop any frames. Resolve just does a really great job utilizing that graphics card and all the RAM that it has available. All right guys, so we took a look at all of that data. Hopefully it was helpful and informative. Now I'm gonna try to wrap everything together, give you guys some suggestions and come to a conclusion. The simple answer is still the same that I've been giving people for the last year or even longer. If you need to be mobile, of course, get a MacBook Pro, or if you're okay with being locked down to your desk, get the iMac. Now there are a couple other interesting things that I figured out during these tests. One of those is that this MacBook Pro is the closest to an iMac that we've ever seen. If you guys took a look at my 15 versus 17 iMac comparison, this MacBook Pro is actually almost as fast as the 2015 5K iMac with the top spec models in Final Cut and even closer if you're using DaVinci Resolve. Now on top of that, if you're using a 2014 iMac or you're using a 2013 or older, this MacBook Pro will actually outperform it. So if you already have an iMac and you want the mobility of a laptop but you don't wanna sacrifice performance and that's your worry, well now you can buy a top spec model like this and get the same or even better performance than your older generation iMac. So how about if you're in the market to buy one of these two machines? You can use the extra performance of the iMac, but you can also use and would like to have the mobility of the MacBook Pro, but you're not really tied down in one direction or the other. Well, there is a big difference, like you guys saw earlier, in the performance between these two machines and virtually each one of these programs. The iMac is quite a bit faster. Well, let's take a look at it. I'm gonna give you guys a, like a rundown between the video editing programs and give you a short explanation. I'm gonna skip the stabilization because uh, in Final Cut, there is a good difference, but they're both incredibly fast, faster than the other programs. And in the other programs, there's about a 40% speed difference, but it's not huge unless you stabilize every clip and then you're gonna see a difference. So we're gonna look at the different projects. I'm gonna give you a short rundown. In Final Cut, we saw an 85% improvement in speed, 90% faster and 125% faster. The harder you push the machine, the bigger difference there is. So if you're editing 1080p or 4K, not doing a lot of effects, it's gonna be very similar performance, but if you're throwing in LUTs, animations, um, scaling 4K footages, doing multi-cams with different effects, you're gonna see a bigger difference with the machine. Uh, with DaVinci Resolve, we have a similar type of scenario. The harder you push the machine, the bigger of a difference there is, uh, but the numbers are 60% faster, 55% faster, and 125% faster. So uh, not as big of a difference as you have in Final Cut. Now with Premiere Pro, we actually get the opposite type of effect. We have a 110% faster for 1080p, 90% faster for 4K, and then only 25% faster for that really difficult project. So my suggestion is if you want to edit uh, with Premiere Pro, and you um, want to be mobile, I would not really go with the MacBook Pro. I would check out the Dell XPS, the newest version. I'll put a link in the video description. It costs less, you get double uh, the RAM and double the SSD, and you're gonna get quite a bit faster performance uh, compared to the MacBook Pro, and it's gonna get closer to this iMac uh, than the numbers I showed here. So um, I'd like 
Premiere Pro to get faster overall. If you go back and you watch the previous tests and you see how long it took Premiere Pro and then how long it took DaVinci Resolve, it's a massive difference. So my other suggestion would be if you are editing with Premiere Pro and you're using a laptop, regardless of what laptop it is, even if you're using a desktop, download uh, the latest version of DaVinci Resolve 14. It is very similar to Premiere Pro, it has most of the features. It is free, completely free. You will get a much, much, much faster video editing experience on uh, the MacBook Pro or on other Windows laptops as well. They've done a ton of optimizations and it just runs so quick, even beats out Final Cut, which is known mainly for its speed in video editing and some of the tests. All right, guys, so I hope this video has been informative. If it has, please hit that like button. Also hit that subscribe button if you guys wanna see more videos. And don't forget to hit that gear or bell icon to enable those notifications so you guys don't miss out on future videos. If you guys have any questions you guys can ask in that comment section below, I will do my best to answer those. Once again, a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You guys can use the coupon code MAXYURIA for two free months or use the link in the video description and stop playing uh, those games on your phones and learn something, uh, improve your knowledge, go out and shoot instead of playing uh, Bejeweled or whatever Candy Crush stuff that we put in there. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.